In the previous video, I talked with Jürgen Meyer how he got into uh, China, became uh, fluently in Chinese, had five different jobs. And we're going to talk about his current job, which is really interesting, and joint venture by Structon about light rail. So, what's the name of the company and what does it do? The company is SRCC, which is an acronym for the partners in the company. So, what we are trying Structon. to... Structon and there is uh, another big partner is making a semiconductor company. It's called SICC, so not SRCC. And the third partner is the local subway company in Jinan, in the, the city where we are. That's a, a small city of 10 million people, which is the capital of Shandong province, which is about uh, 500 kilometers south of Beijing. Okay, so Chinese partner and the electronic company, is that which, where is that from? So we have two Chinese partners who are locally from Shandong and then we have Structon Rail, which is uh, quite well known in the Netherlands. Uh, they are very successful worldwide uh, building and maintaining rail infrastructure, but they also make propulsion systems for urban rail, light rail, trams, metros. So they have been very successful in Australia, in Sweden, Italy, England, everywhere. Uh, really, it's, it's interesting that we have that. Uh, I mean, we don't have much subway systems, we have a little bit of a tram. But then Siemens, I always see there. But we, what, what, what does that Structon light rail company? What kind of products do they do? Well, Structon Rail is is a, is a very homegrown, a very successful Dutch company that started in the 20s as part of uh, the Dutch railways. Now it's part of uh, the Oranje Woud Group. So they they're just now part of the Sundering Group, and uh, but they have been very successful. You know, they do a lot of maintenance in the Netherlands for Pro Rail. Um, very successful, very innovative. And that is the reason why they could find partners here in this second tier city. So Beijing is first tier and Jinan is a second tier city where they were just starting to build subway systems and they want to produce their whatever runs in their own city, they want to produce in their own city because it will create GDP, it creates jobs and they can lure a high-tech partner like Structon Rail into China and work with them. And this is the win-win situation. So Structon Rail can enter the Chinese market, which is new to them, completely new. The semiconductor partner can later sell their components, which are part of our products, they are assembled together. And Gina Metro is for 40% owner, and they can basically give us the deals that can control the quality, and they are assured that they have a preferred partner to build out a network. And once you show in that city, because everything is city-oriented, I mean, there's like these hundreds of cities with more than a million uh, inhabitants, and when you are in one city, you can move to other cities. Exactly, so you start with a base, then you expand within the province, which still has 100 million inhabitants, and there's five other cities that still need these systems. And then you can go, uh, you know, all of China, you can go all of Asia, you can do work for other projects in Asia. The challenge, however, is it's very local, as you say. So to sell your products that come from province A to a local player in province B could be challenging because they all prefer a local uh, uh, it's like there's 500 uh, electric vehicle companies in, uh, in China, all related to a city. But your first job is to get a, um, to get a beachhead in China, in that city. Exactly. And once that is running fine and we are, we are out of you know, the woods in terms of uh, making some profits and getting to know how the market works. So the first uh, two years, this is uh, the second year, and we're now really starting our first project. So we will do the auxiliary systems for uh, Subway Line 2, which is a, a very long, high rapid, unmanned, unmanned train, uh, high-tech uh, technology. So that is the proof of the podium. If we do that right and we have the trust of our partners, I think then we can grow rapidly. Yeah. You do the powertrain and you do the software of maintenance. And uh, who builds the car itself? The cars itself are built by the very famous but also infamous, you know, China rail company, CRCC. They are our partners here, so we have to work with these state-owned... They're huge. Oh, they are huge. They are massive. They have hundreds of thousands of employees and they are very tough to work with. You know, they, they can do what we do, uh, so we have to be pushed by our shareholders into cooperating with them. It's, it's very tough, but... Yeah. I the city says, I want to buy a car, I want to buy your cars, but with this proportion system, and if you do a really good job, if you can convince them, then it might also be a good gateway again. Exactly, and they force the China Rail Company to work with us, so they, we need their help. So without that setup, without that platform, we wouldn't have the slightest chance. But this is a perfect 
you know, cooperation in a win-win-win situation. It's interesting that the Dutch are able to connect to that kind of stuff. That they are, that you have to have that, uh, uh, that you have that connections, that you can get the trust and have this joint venture. How did that come about? Well, I think the uh, the parties met each other about uh, four years ago at the famous rail show in Berlin that is every two years. So this semiconductor guy was looking for new industries to sell his products. He's a very, a very, very smart interpreter, Mr. Zong. Uh, we should do an interview with him next time. He is, for me, he is a daily masterclass how to do business in China. So he is an entrepreneur. So he is looking for new industries. So he went to Germany and he saw Structum. He started talking to them. They started exploring and within two years they basically expanded into this third partner which is the metro and now you have uh, actually very fast a very good platform okay. and then China can do everything themselves right because that whole uh, metro system company can do it themselves and what does your product now have what does Tructon have in terms of technology which is then enough for the city to say hey we want to basically go through this route well that's a very good question China can do everything themselves but and they want to do everything themselves Exactly. So they will use our technology in a Chinese company. So I'm running a Chinese company, not a Dutch company. So I have to do everything in Chinese, by the way, and I'm the only foreigner in the company. So but you're fluent in Chinese, so it's good enough. Well, the first year, you know, the sweat was running off my back because I had to do board meetings in Chinese and all that. But I'm beyond that. So this is important to, to connect to my business partners. But our Dutch technology is actually very good. It's uh, very innovative. It's what is innovative that what they need? Is it less energy? Is it faster acceleration? Is it better maintenance? Well, you already mentioned two. So, uh, low energy consumption, very low carbon footprint, so a very uh, environmental friendly footprint. And of course maintenance. So maintenance is becoming a very big topic in all industries in China. So instead of just dumping you know, a lot of steel, building railways, you now have to start thinking very early what is the cost of ownership of your rolling stock and of your rail infrastructure. And we have the means of artificial intelligence and measurements to help our partners to very early on in the cycle understand what it means to have a long-term ownership of that infrastructure. This could be billions of dollars uh, business. If you basically do well, if you succeed in one city and go to multiple cities and, be, and start to uh, inspire the big uh, company, the, then th this could be really huge. It could be big if we do the technology transfer right, if we make sure that we are not copied. So you have to innovate. So the best way, to, the best way not to be copied is just to innovate. Don't worry too much about copy-paste, but keep innovating your product. Uh, we are still in the uphill phase, you know, we have to do the usual chores, the certifications, but it's, it's moving, so the grind is moving. And I'm actually quite optimistic if we, if we keep going, you know, we will get there. And I really want to encourage, you know, the Dutch business partners to be resilient and move on and trust the Chinese business partner that we will get there. Yeah, because the tiny, how do the Chinese business partners in this uh, joint venture like uh, this uh, project? They like the product, but they don't like our speed. So they think we have to speed up. So China is all about speed. And, and sometimes that is very tiresome because we Europeans are about quality. You cannot compromise quality, you know. They also want quality. So they want quality and speed and a low price. So that is three things that don't work. So what is it? And also, I mean, being in China, you first have to invest in it and do a couple of projects without uh, you, you're going to basically... I mean, I was talking to NIO. And NIO is an EV company, it's beautiful, it's like the Tesla. And they, and they say, well, we're a number two company, version two company. We have community and product, we're much better than Tesla. And uh, I said, but you're losing 500 million a quarter. I says, no, 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 we're not losing 500 million a quarter. We are investing 500 million a quarter. <laughs> and we were all going, well, well, your quarterly figures and what is your... So they are used to invest for the longer time. Yes, and this is a very important cultural difference with the Netherlands because we are not used to this, uh, I would say, uh, very uh, ad hoc kind of huge investment. So we really are more cautious. So this is the biggest cultural challenge I have to balance. So the Chinese think that the Dutch have to invest big time to get this entry ticket into China, which is correct. But the Dutch want to do it more in a controlled pace with a reasonable flow of money and not just dumping shitloads of money. So I think both are right. And it's my task to explain it to each other. So that leads some Sometimes to tense discussions, but I think there is still, you know, common ground enough to. Uh, so the sweat keeps on uh, basically coming off your back. Yes, keeps on flowing. So I wanted to try this because running a joint venture in China, I think, is the ultimate level of difficulty. I like nightmare. Yeah, I like to learn Chinese, you know. And but after this, you know, I think I have done many, many difficult things. Um, <laughs> but as long as you stay, stay calm, and you, you really don't get emotional, and you 
understand the incentives of both parties and find a common ground, I think then you, you will succeed. When can we see the first uh, train running with your product? Next year. Next year. There's no, there's no choice. Uh, we have to do it. But last quarter of next year, our first trains will be running in Jinan. So this is Julian Meyer, the ultimate bridge builder between Europe and the Netherlands and, uh, and the Chinese wave. So um, good luck. We're going to see the thing running in 2020.